And um, now I'm very happy to introduce Levente uh, Sedak and Peter Plehat. Uh, Peter Plehat is from the Czech Academy of Science, and Levente uh, Sedak is from the LT uh, University in Budapest. So thank you very much. Very happy to be here. Uh, actually, this uh, presentation um, was done in the collaboration of, of uh, several persons. Uh, that only Pat and myself were really lucky enough to be here with you. Um, so, and, uh, and first of all, I would really... Yes. First of all, I would like to uh, thank Pat for all the work he, he, he did for us. So, uh, uh, he, he made really a lot of charts and, uh, and lots of uh, statistical analysis uh, all along the uh, uh, last months. Uh, so uh, that's why we have uh, some results uh, and that's how I can uh, speak about it. So first of all, I'd like to show you the entire project and then I move on to the specific topic uh, of today and uh, that will help me to, uh, well, no, so have to explain you uh, the, uh, 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 how uh, the computational uh, work was done and uh, I will uh, try to explain you the, uh, the consequences and the results of what we got thanks to that. Uh, we have uh, a corpus of, of Hungarian poetry uh, prior to 1600. As far as I know, among the finno ugrian languages, uh, this is the earliest big corpus that we have. It's not as big uh, as when you have an oral poetry from the 19th, 20th century, century but it's an early uh, uh, tradition. So we have uh, uh, 1,523 uh, 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 pieces actually in this database uh, prior to 1600. And it's uh, really um, very, uh, in a way, it's slightly diverse. So there are uh, mostly uh, poems are strophic, but some of them are in rhyming couplets, mostly some, but some are uh, but certainly not some. They are more aphoristic uh, or epigrammic uh, styled, mostly rhymed. Uh, but there is also some greco roman versification that were experienced in the 16th century Hungarian poetry, uh, mostly syllabic, not always, and the most frequent form is the monorite uh, strokes, but there are some exceptions. What is uh, similar to some other traditions, like the, 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 the Finnish or Estonian, that uh, there are no really stroke enjambments, and the line enjambments is also the exceptional. The Caesarea are strong, but the meters vary uh, between, uh, let's say, uh, six or five and nineteen, or even to above twenty-one. Uh, while uh, the lines with eleven and twelve, of eleven and twelve syllables, are the most frequent, uh, with Caesarea of six, six or five, seven, uh, elephants. And we have a, a very nice database uh, and. Uh, it's a professor of mine, Ivan Horvath, who had a conception already in the 70s, in 1970s, and uh, uh, he always claims that it was the first online uh, uh, poetical repertory uh, all over the world. So it's, it's online since uh, 93. Uh, and what we are doing now, it's a, it's a multiple project, but one of the main goals is to uh, prepare a full text database because it is just uh, a database with metadata, but not, but not containing the text. In an earlier version, there were some texts, but not everything. And now we are trying to, uh, to put online or to make accessible through this platform uh, everything. And the little corpus what we have is just uh, about 185 poems, uh, well, a bit less. Here you see it's a subcorpus, so-called historical songs. These are epic poems and uh, they can come from very different, uh, uh, I mean, uh, so the plots might be different, the, the themes, either Hungarian history uh, of medieval times or uh, biblical stories, mostly from the uh, Old Testament, contemporary political events, uh, uh, classical texts like the Enid has been rewritten in this tropic form, 
uh, and uh, all medieval um, romances or uh, folk ballads, uh, typical folk ballad um, motifs have been uh, written, uh, elaborated also in, in this uh, form. And uh, we have some rewritings, uh, rewritings of Boccaccio or the Fotogatis uh, um, romance uh, from German uh, um, literature. So it's really a, a wide range of, uh, of topics. Um, and all, all together, we have uh, uh, 174 poems and uh, all above uh, 50, uh, so 25,000 uh, strokes. And as to the tokens, you see it's above a half a million. And uh, so what we did is a morphological analysis with the, with the E modular surface change with some pre-normalization to that and uh, to have a the morphological scheme of uh, all lines and of all birds. Uh, and there are many difficulties with that because this chain, the analyzer chain, was produced for uh, 20th century, the modern Hungarian text. And uh, because of the graphical variants, because of the changes in the, in the Hungarian grammar during the last 500 years, uh, many things cannot be optimally uh, um, analyzed. So we are still struggling how to do that, and, and there are some problems. Here, just I have two examples of how, what, what, what does it look like? Uh, um, so two uh, uh, short excerpts of, uh, of these poems. Uh, mostly we have tatrans in our uh, corpus, but here we have two other types. So one of uh, with five um, uh, verses, one uh, with strokes of five verses, and another one uh, that is the most complex form in our subcorpus. It's rhyming A A B C C uh, A B C C B D D B six six seven six six seven six six seven. It's a rather artistical form, but nothing to do with the Sanskrit tradition in, in, in German. So it's rather simple. But for the Hungarian poetical tradition, it's something already complicated. Here's the, the search uh, interface, uh, uh, actually running only in Hungarian, but um, yeah, other versions and languages will come soon. And uh, just uh, um, before um, going uh, to the topic, uh, we also analyzed the music, for instance, and so because it's a sound poetry, we have some melodies and lots of indi indications of tunes. And uh, this is with the Gaffey uh, software that you try to visualize how does it work. Uh, so these are the relationships between the different poetical uh, genres and uh, the collections. And uh, uh, of course, here you can't see anything, just colors. But uh, um, of course, it helps to, to identify uh, the common models, metrical models, and musical models, and how they were uh, used. And uh, uh, analyzing uh, this uh, um, big uh, um, uh, picture and taking out some smaller parts, uh, there's a chance to really to uh, to, to achieve um, some results. Uh, what I will not speak about uh, today, but uh, it's nice. Okay, and. So, what, uh, because of the conference, uh, we thought that it would be nice also to, to speak about the, uh, the um, uh, orality of the, these texts. And uh, you know uh, probably mostly what, what the, the epic formulas are, uh, or the formulae, and, uh, and that's what we were trying to identify. Because the question behind our research is, um, is the 16th century Hungarian poetry something archaic, or is that something uh, that were created during that time? Uh, does it go back to a long uh, living oral tradition, as you had this in, in Finland or in Estonia, or was it just created at that time in the forms that you know, and it's coming from, uh, from a humanist uh, uh, formal tradition and, uh, and a sound tradition? And uh, the traces of orality by the repetitions, by the use of epic formulas, 
might be uh, of some interest. Because if you find that lots of repetitions, lexical repetitions, it means that there is an oral uh, uh, composition technique behind the text. These are two poems uh, where I show uh, how uh, some uh, uh, lexical elements are uh, um, identical. Uh, they're not too much. So the common uh, uh, colors are showing uh, the more or less same uh, parts. But here you see it's just like an alliteration. It's beginning with, with the word knowledge, it means big. And uh, so uh, the, uh, the repetition might have uh, very different uh, forms. But, um, and some formulae uh, have been identified uh, by previous scholars. Uh, you see that the same sentence uh, uh, has been reused by the same author in, in four different poems here. And uh, with a slight difference, you can find them also uh, in, in many other uh, poems in, uh, in, and by many other authors. So um, it's, uh, it is something really promising to, to, look, to search for this and uh, to, to, to take a look on, on, on how uh, repetition and the parallelisms uh, work. So uh, this is another example uh, how it is um, uh, some uh, examples were uh, reused. And I've taken out just uh, to show you uh, without entering into uh, details of the Hungarian um, uh, language, uh, how uh, they are similar but not totally identical. And uh, as it has not only just uh, tetrastics as you have in your Finnish and uh, Estonian corpus, uh, it might be also um, uh, a metrical variance. So it's just you have one syllable less, but otherwise it's almost the same uh, uh, verse. And this is these are two par this, this is when we have parallel structures. It's also important. It's a, a pattern also of. Um, of oral uh, composition. The Turkish are all crying Allah, Hungarians are all crying Jesus. So this is the, the meaning of this sentence. And you see that the two uh, most important words are changed uh, there. And, uh, and it occurs also in, in other times. So first of all, we try to uh, search for uh, some collocations and, and Pet did uh, um, um, a search for uh, the most frequent uh, verbs, one of the most frequent verbs. So do you say something about it, please? Yeah, uh, so just the, the very first approach we've chosen to, to identify some formula or something uh, was the very common uh, collocation detection. Uh, so this chart gives the, uh, gives the uh, one, one of the examples with the highest collocation score of, of uh, two words that Basically, are co-occurring throughout uh, throughout the corpus uh, together. Yes. And these sorry, and uh, these two words are <laughs> yes. These are drums and uh, so drums and trumpets. Sorry, <laughs> drums and trumpets. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just the funniest example. And uh, you can see that so, uh, on this uh, X scale, you have the numbers, identifying numbers of the poems. And here are the occurrences. So in which line uh, do you find these uh, 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 two words together in the same verse? And uh, you can see that uh, it is used by one, two, three, four, five, six uh, different poems. Uh, and not by the same author only, so it's funny. And uh, uh, but there is one author who uses it in the same composition five times. Uh, this collocation. So there are many war stones actually in, in this corpus, and that's why we have this. And um, so we, we moved on also with the lamata. And yeah, then this chart is the very gives the very same, except it's not based on uh, word forms, the, the precise occurrence, but uh, on lamata. So uh, it, it, it detects more uh, more occurrences than the than the first one because it doesn't depend on a precise word form. Yes, so this is just um, not the plural form what we had before, but just uh, the trumpet and uh, the drum. And you see it's, it's much wider, so it is really uh, something that is reused and uh, of course it can characterize also the, the topic of, uh, of the poems. But also in biblical uh, 
uh, songs, for instance, uh, many times they are speaking about uh, bottles between uh, Jews and Babylonians, and so it's, it's funny. Um, okay, we try to make a kind of the typology of the formulae and uh, to, to talk about that how does it uh, work. Um, and we had the feeling that although some uh, identical, lexically identical formulae uh, have been identified, they were not so high in number. So it is much more frequent, uh, and uh, uh, either that they were in the same poem or uh, not totally uh, the same. So the repetition of hemistics, the repetition of the entire verses was really, let's say, rare. But we try to find the, the inner formulae or the shared or external ones when it appears in different uh, texts, and uh, then also the formula schemes when uh, um, just this is the metrical and the syntactical structure that is identical but uh, not uh, the same words. So uh, that's how we were uh, more interested maybe to find uh, proverbial elements. These are just two um, um, uh, verses analyzed uh, in the, 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 more, you know, the morphological analysis of, of two verses. And uh, well, you can see that uh, because Hungarian is an agglutinative language, uh, the morphological structure might be uh, rather complex. And that causes really uh, troubles when we were uh, trying to identify uh, identical, uh, morphologically identically built verses. Because it might really occur that you have uh, a, a very similar word that the last suffix and, uh, and uh, the root, well, let's say the root, so the, the lemma is the same, the lemma is the last suffix, but in between there are different elements that are not obligatory, and it means that it, it really somehow harms, so it's, it's not easy to calibrate very well the search uh, for the same form, although the, strex, uh, the text by hearing, by the perception, seems to be uh, really uh, parallel. So it was uh, it's just to show how, because of the, the linguistic uh, reasons, it's, it's difficult. So here you have two words, and uh, the morphological analysis uh, shows that it's of one, two, three, four, five uh, more themes, actually. And uh, this one, too. Uh, so it's a verb form, uh, with the verbal prefix, and uh, yeah, it's a four, four uh, part. Um, and this is uh, already one of the charts that uh, Pat produced for us, and uh, um, because we tried also uh, to, to do the entropy, to so check the last uh, uh, morphemes of the of the three last morphemes of the, the lines, but it didn't really show uh, 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 results. There were too, too many noise. That's why we couldn't really use it uh, to analyze uh, um, the the parallelisms. Um, we thought it might be useful because the Hungarian rhymes are mostly morphematic rhymes. So uh, this is because it's a specific flexion and something is attributed at the end that it's rhyming. So these are not the, uh, the landmatas, so the birds uh, from itself that are rhyming. But this is another chart that we, yeah. we did. So basically the task was to Search for some grammatical parallelism between the lines whenever the consequent consequent lines has a similar similar uh, grammatical structure. So uh, the approach here is very similar to what Maciej was presenting uh, in, uh, this morning. Uh, we took each pair of uh, consecutive lines, and each line was represented as a pack of morphemes. Yeah, so we split the entire chain into, into particular morphemes. And represented each each, uh, each line as this, and measured the cosine distance uh, between the between the consequent lines. Uh, here, what you what you have is the is the average for uh, the, the the dot represents the average for uh, each particular book, and we have the uh, confidence intervals here. So that's that's what the chart actually represents, and the color coding. Uh, yeah, that's what yes. this comment will say something about. Yes. So. Um... We, okay, so we, we really had to do something. What is uh, a peculiarity of this corpus that uh, two-thirds of the poems uh, in, in the subcorpus have an acrostic. 
So although it's an oral tradition, and it was performed in, as a song, but they have an acrostic that might be read along, a stroke acrostic, so each first letter of a stroke give a text. Sometimes it might be a very complicated text, uh, 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 Latin uh, distics, for instance, or uh, even a, 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 the first stroke uh, of the poem might be contained in the extra stick reading. So it's really funny in a way. But it's really strongly related to the, to, to the to scripture, to the written character of the poems. And we try to see if, the, if, if it affects also the repetition somehow, the, the identical structure, morphological structure, that it's more related to, uh, the, uh, to, to writing. I, I told that the orality uh, uh, brings with itself a stronger community in the morphological uh, uh, repetition. So parallelism and orality goes together. That was the idea. Yeah, but no. <laughs> According to this chart, the red spots are the poems with acrostics, and those based on, on classical uh, or humanist uh, models, and they have a, a stronger uh, community. This, the difference is not so huge, but still there is a stronger uh, 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 parallelism between the lines of the same stroke. It's something that is really funny as an experience, and it's the, I, I can't explain that but, uh, yet, but it's uh, interesting. Um, and yeah, we see that here, uh, when the, the, I included also the translations, it, it changed a little bit, uh, but also uh, there are these uh, violet spots here that you can see. Um, these are poems that are uh, uh, strongly uh, related to uh, the um, um, to orality um, uh, on the level of lexical repetitions. Okay, and here to show you, it's, this is just one author who produced several poems in the corpus, and uh, um, yeah, sometimes uh, the yeah, you can't really see uh, um, uh, a precise uh, style in this case, for instance. Okay, another try what we did was to, to compare with another purpose this. So we selected 12 history of 12 folk ballads uh, collected in the 19th century uh, and to see uh, if they are alike, uh, alike in, um, in the morphological structure and repetition. So yeah, so this is just a basic but very symmetric, except we are not uh, dealing uh, with, a, with a single morpheme representation of, of a line, but we are measuring the, the frequency of trigrams, so that we, we somehow take into account uh, yeah, the order of, of, of the morphemes. Yes, so the blue uh, spots are the, the ballads, and you see that there are four of them that they, they are very low, uh, below the, the average, and there are five poems uh, among the, these three grams that are also uh, uh, coming out and below the average of the, uh, the, the ballads. And, um, and it is also very uh, interesting because um, one of the poets, Bogati, is represented by two poems, and while well, there are three others. And what is interesting that this poet Bogati was uh, active at the end of the 16th century. He was a very good poet, very active, uh, very conscious of the, uh, the rhyming. And uh, in his case, uh, the, the three grams and the repetition of the three grams means something totally different. It means that he's rhyming very well, that he's very, uh, he's very uh, conscious on, on, on writing uh, uh, the strokes and or organizing the syntax, but probably in the three other cases, it might be more uh, um, um, an archive feature uh, that shows uh, the repetition. Okay, so here you see that these are the examples of these authors and the other rhymes. That is an archive pattern. It's very frequent in one of them. Okay, we also check the unrhymed lines in in dated poems. How does it work? Can you tell us something? Yeah, so. But you can, you can you can see that as for the frequency of unrhymed lines, there is definitely no correlation with when they were published. Yes, so it's changing, and uh, we also check there are some poems that are not dated, and there's a uh, very large difference. And the poems that were uh, thought to be oral here are here marked uh, with a red line, 
uh, or already composed at least partly, and you see that uh, some of them have a very huge number of unread lines. So this is about the vocabulary the region, this is the last part. Yes, something where we actually found some difference between the ballads and, uh, and, and the poems was simply the vocabulary richness, uh, the type token ratio. The thing is, with type token ratio, it is, it is very dependent on the size of the text. So what we did, we took a frame of 100 lines, uh, I'm sorry, I mean one, uh, 100 words. We, we, we measured the, 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 the type token ratio of these frames moved by, uh, moved by 10. And here again, you get you have the, the average value and the confidence interval, and there is a clear, uh, clear difference between the ballast and, and the rest. Yes, uh, um, as you're running out of time, I just uh, comment very shortly. The highest uh, value, you see the difference. So this is one of the latest ones uh, of the, the corpus. What I showed you first, this is the structure A, A, B, C, C, D, 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 B. It's very complex structure. Actually, this structure was invented for lyrical poetry, for uh, love poetry. And someone uses it for an epic poetry, for a, a, a war song, actually, describing the bottle. And, uh, uh, but it shows that the vocabulary richness shows somehow that it's, uh, uh, it's a totally other standard that he wants to uh, get closer to. Uh, and uh, this other funny thing is that we have one ballad that is striking out in vocabulary richness. And this is uh, the, the ballad version of a historical song that is here. So uh, the ballad has a lower or, or no, a higher uh, vocabulary richness than uh, the historical song variant that is uh, 300, 400 years older. Uh, but it's fine. Uh, and uh, it's, yeah, it might be compared. And uh, yeah, here you, we also, I also try to, to see whether we can see the difference between poems with acrostics and without acrostics. And it, uh, it apparently, uh, the poets uh, having an acrostic. Had, uh, had a larger vocabulary. So there is a little no uh, correlation between these. And, uh, and this is the change in time. No, what you yeah. made. Uh, unlike, unlike the, the frequency of unread lines, there is some correlation definitely. Although not super strong, uh, and the vocabulary richness is, is, is ten, tends to grow, grow in time, obviously. Yes. So, really, to conclude, um, we have too many questions and uh, not enough answers yet. But it's for sure that we have to do something with a morphological analyzer. It's not without, not faultless. It works with the performance above 90 percent. I don't know, 95 maybe. But uh, I'm not always sure. And uh, of course, it's a, we need some more precise priorities. So, acrostics are sometimes not all along the poem, just of course, ten strokes. Then, then maybe it doesn't affect the classification of the And yeah, that's my running Okay. Yes. Okay. And so. No, no, but he, he's right. Okay. So, and, uh, and maybe we will try also to compare this to, to, to other uh, protocols. So, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Peter Levante, for your uh, contribution. I'm expecting people have questions for you. Uh, yeah. Would you like to start? Yeah, thank you for the talk. I have two questions. Uh, so the first one is uh, used morphological analysis, but this is a historical corpus from the 16th century. So. Do you have any problems with the language being non-standard uh, and out of vocabulary words and something like this? Oh yes, it's horrible. Uh, uh, yes, so the morphological analyzer was not was conceived uh, actually first for uh, modern Hungarian text, but there is uh, it was uh, uh, there's also uh, 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 some development for earlier texts. So for 15th century uh, uh, Hungarian text, actually, but in between the 16th century is a large vocabulary. So um, yeah, it's uh, uh, we have lots of problems, and also uh, we have to modernize many texts 
somehow, and um, he also made a, 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 a phonetical uh, transcription. And uh, so, in, for some researches, for some searches, we, we use the, the phonetical uh, uh, transcription of the, of the text. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Andrew. Okay. Thank you. We have very little time left, so I will let Tony have a small question. Two small questions. Uh, one, um, time token is ratio. Um, the, the time token ratio we yeah. talked about. Um, you have shown that, yeah, ballads are, have a high token ratio, and uh, you said the rest, a lower one. Uh, my question, <laughs> sorry, could it be that more uh, a difference between a, a genuine oral literature and, and written uh, poetry than genres. Maybe, uh, yeah, especially this, this one example of this ballad version of a historical uh, plot. So, yeah, uh, could be the type spoken ratio uh, um, a characteristic for. Uh, um, a difference between uh, oral and written tradition. And the second short question, um, what was the second one? <laughs> I don't remember. Okay. Yeah, sorry, sorry, just the, 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 the situation was the opposite one. The ballad has a lower type of ratio, has lower vocabulary richness than the written poems. Ah, yeah, okay. Yes, absolutely. Do they have a lower, lower? Um, just this is an exception that there is one that I, and and uh, I don't know how, but it appears that it has uh, more uh, words than uh, the history of the Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Peter Levente.